By design, the Pokemon TCG is meant to last a couple of turns, much like battles in video games last multiple rounds where attacks are being traded back and forth. Every once in a while, however, unwanted strategies slip through the cracks because of oversights by the game designers, or simply because a card pool is too big in some of Pokemon's alternative formats. Today, we'll take a look at the most influential cards that enable strategies that could end games as soon as the first turn of the game, and how they impacted the Pokemon TCG. And at number 10, we have Honchkrow GX from Sun and Moon on Broken Bonds. Its ability, Rule of the Night, prevents your opponent from playing any tool cards, special energies, and stadium cards as long as Honchkrow is in the active spot. This card's Featherstorm attack deals 90 damage for 1 Darkness and 2 Colorless, and deals 30 damage to 2 of your opponent's bench GX or EX Pokemon. Last but not least, its GX attack, Unfair GX, requires 2 Colorless energies to be used and lets you take a look at your opponent's hand. You then get to choose 2 cards from their hand to put into the discard pile. When most people think about ways to win a Pokemon game on their first turn, they will think about combinations of cards that are able to get rid of every Pokemon your opponent has in play. Due to the nature of the Pokemon TCG and the requirement to usually knock out 6 Pokemon, it's very hard to have a clear turn 1 win decks, which is why many decks follow strategies to prevent your opponent from getting to play the game, or at the very least, slow them down enough to make the game significantly easier. This is where Honchkrow GX comes in. Making sure that your opponent doesn't get to play the game by taking away any consistency pieces from their hand can cause unplayable hands for your opponent. Funnily enough, when Honchkrow GX first saw competitive play, it played a much different role. Multiple control type decks use a combination of Unfair GX together with In, a supporter that allows both players to shuffle their hand into the deck and then draw cards equal to their remaining prize cards. In allowed players to put their opponent to a low hand size since they've taken away a couple of prize cards to then hopefully lock them out of drawing any more cards. Even if they were able to draw cards, Chip Chip Ice Axe was a wonderful tool to secure the game. This item card allows you to look at the top three cards your opponent's deck, pick one of them to put on top, and then shuffle the rest. Other cards that these decks were often using were Reset Stamp, an item card that works similar to In by shuffling your opponent's hand into the deck and then drawing cards equal to the remaining prize cards after. Plumeria, a supporter card that requires you to discard two cards from your hand in order to discard an energy card attached to your opponent's Pokemon, helped with making sure that your opponent won't be able to attack. Even if your opponent took time to establish a board and didn't directly go for prize cards to play around Reset Stamp and In, Red Card could still fulfill the disruption role by shuffling your opponent's hand into the deck and then drawing three cards. This entire concept was only possible because of Ranguru from Ultra Prisms and its resource management attack that puts three Pokemon from discard pile on the bottom of your deck. And of course, Honchkrow GX to get rid of their hand in the first place. Shortly after this unhealthy combination of cards emerged, most of these cards got put on the expanded ban list and remain there to this day. This meant that Honchkrow GX now had to find a new role to play. A core piece for its future was the item card Death Stone from Unbroken Bonds. When played, this item card allows you to search your deck for Ms. Magius, Honchkrow, Chandelure, or Aegislash, and put it onto one of your Pokemon in play that evolves into them. This was the turning point for Honchkrow GX, which from now on would be used in decks that didn't use any other kinds of attackers and aimed to use Unfair GX on their first turn thanks to Double Colorless Energy, an energy card that provided two colorless energy. In addition to the Death Stone combo, this stack would often run other disruption cards and not allow your opponent to play the game. This consistency, however, is very gimmicky and unreliable against most decks in the expanded format, which is why Honchkrow GX ends up so low on our list. And at number 9, we have Shuppet from Platinum. For no energy costs, this card's Hypnotic Gaze puts a defending Pokemon to sleep, and for just one Psychic Energy, Fade Out deals 30 damage and returns Shuppet and all cards attached to it to your hand. The second part of the attack is especially important for the purpose that it was used for, but we'll get into that in a bit. Shuppet was one of the first ever true Donk decks. A Donk deck is a deck that aims to win the game on the first turn by knocking out all of your opponent's active Pokemon in play. Based on its damage output of just 30 damage, Shuppet needed some help to deal enough damage to knock out Pokemon with slightly more HP. When this card was first released in Platinum, this was accomplished by using the item card Plus Power, a card that was attached to Pokemon which then dealt 10 extra damage for each Plus Power attached to it. Another way to directly influence the damage output of Fade Out was Buck's Training, a supporter card that allowed you to draw 2 cards and also added extra 10 damage to your attack for the turn. In addition to these damage modifiers, some cards allowed you to place damage counters onto your opponent's Pokemon. The most prominent card at the time was Crobat G, with its Flash by Poke Power, that allowed you to put damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon to play once it was placed on your bench. To make even more use of this card, the item card Poke Turn, which allowed you to pick up an SP Pokemon in play to put it back in your hand, which Crobat G was, made sure to get in some extra Flash Bites. A little lesser known card is Poke Blower Plus from Diamond and Pearl Stormfront. When two Pokeballer Plus are in play at the same time, it switches one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon. The much more interesting effect for the Shuppet deck was what happens when you only play one of them. If you play one Pokeballer Plus, you flip a coin, and if heads, you get to pick one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and put a damage counter on it. These damage placing cards made it possible to knock out bench Pokemon, while Shuppet could focus on taking out the active Pokemon with enough plus powers attached to it. This worked very well at the time because basic Pokemon with high amounts of HP weren't that common at the time making it possible for Shuppet to win the game on the first turn. 
Even when games wouldn't immediately end, Shuppet was still able to carry through the game thanks to the secondary part of Fade Out. Because a plus power being attached to Shuppet, Fade Out would return all of them back to your hand as well, making sure that you could easily use them again on the following turn. With later sets, this card just kept getting stronger. Platinum Arceus brought Expert Belt to the table, a tool card that when attached adds an extra 20 HP, 20 damage to attacks, and makes the Pokemon give up an extra prize card. In Shuppet's case, this simply worked as a tool to deal 20 more damage, as it would be returned to your hand, making the other added stats irrelevant. Hard Gold and Soul Silver helped the deck with Secret Support cards. With Secret in play, both players returned one of the bench Pokemon to their hand. This served two important purposes for this deck. Firstly, it allowed you to reuse Poke powers like Crobat's Flash Bite more frequently, but it also removed a Pokemon that your opponent had in play, making it easier for you to win the game. Being one of the first true Donks, or Turn 1 Win, decks, and a solid deck overall, put Shuppet into our list at 9th place. And at number 8, we have Machamp from Diamond and Pearl Stormfront. This card has a total of 3 attacks. Its first attack, Takeout, deals 40 damage for 1 Fighting Energy, or alternatively, knocks out the defending Pokemon immediately if it's a basic Pokemon. Hurricane requires 2 Colorless Energy and flips 4 coins. For each of these coins that lands on heads, this attack deals 30 damage. Its last attack, Rage, has a cost of 2 Fighting and 2 Colorless Energy, and deals 60 damage plus 10 extra damage for each damage counter in Machamp. Most of the time, Takeout was the attack of choice, and also the reason why Machamp made it onto our list of the strongest turn one win conditions. Back when Stormfront was released, the rules of the Pokemon trading card game looked very differently. The player going first could only attach an energy card, but was able to attack as well. Whereas today, the player going first can play any cards except supporter cards, but isn't able to attack. Another change that has since been introduced was for the item card Rare Candy. Today, players have to wait one turn to use Rare Candy on one of their basic Pokemon to evolve it into a Stage 2 Pokemon from their hand. Back then, it could be used immediately to evolve a basic Pokemon into either Stage 2 or Stage 1. This rule change was very relevant for cards like Machamp, as the player going second could simply evolve a Machop into Machamp on their first turn and start attacking with Takeout. And since your opponent didn't have any ways to evolve on their first turn, any Pokemon they had put in play could be knocked out. At least as long as they didn't have an effect on them that prevented Takeout's effect from working. Many times when Machamp decks were facing decks that didn't play a lot of basic Pokemon, or Pokemon with attacks that would search the deck for more basic Pokemon, games would immediately end in favor of the Machamp player if your opponent didn't have any Pokemon remaining in play. Even if there were more Pokemon remaining, the early pressure Machamp could often bring a tempo advantage that was hard to recover from. These decks were definitely what you would refer to as Glass Cannon decks, as Machamp's strength was purely for the early game. Hurricane wasn't a very reliable attack due to its coin flip, and would usually end up doing an average of 60 damage, which couldn't keep up with many of the other top tier attackers back then. Rage could have been used if it wasn't for its hefty energy cost. Overall, Machamp will go down as one of the most iconic fast-paced decks anyway. And at number 7, we have Broken Time Space from Platinum. As long as this stadium card is in play, either player can evolve Pokemon immediately instead of having to wait a turn to evolve them. Funnily enough, this card wasn't as meta-breaking when it first came out as one might think, considering that it bypasses one of the core mechanics of the Pokemon TCG by allowing you to evolve immediately. The only reason for that was the fact of the previously wrenched ruling on Rare Candy, which made it possible to be used immediately in a Pokemon that was put in play, already allowed players to evolve easier. This, however, didn't mean that Broken Time Space had a slower start or only saw mediocre play. Every deck that used a strategy of evolving Pokemon played at least two copies of it. Decks with stage 2 Pokemon in them usually ran four rare candies and three to four Broken Time Space to make evolving as easy as possible. As you could imagine, this card allowed for a lot of decks to get out their evolution Pokemon on their first turn, but this isn't the reason why it made it onto our list. The main reason for its inclusion is that it plays a key role in the Unlimited format, a format that doesn't really exist competitively, but includes every single card that was ever released. As you can imagine, a format that stretches across more than 20 years of Pokemon TCG releases is bound to have some broken interactions. Many Pokemon that were released over the years have incredibly powerful abilities or Poke powers, so being able to get them out as soon as the first turn thanks to broken time space, now being able to be played the first turn when going first makes them even better. For a brief period of time, it actually worked in the standard format as well. Back in 2011, for about two months, new rule changes were introduced that now allowed players to play any card they wanted on their first turn, in addition to being able to attack as well. Thanks to cards like Broken Time Space that weren't designed for a format like that at all, TPCI had to step in for an emergency mid-season rotation, so that from now on, only cards from Heart Gold and Soul Silver and onwards would be legal for tournament play. Broken Time Space being one of the main reasons for the first and only mid-season rotation, and still being an integral part of turn 1 win strategies in the limited format to make it one of the most powerful cards that enable unfair strategy. And at number 6, we have Ms. Magius from Sun and Moon on Broken Bonds. Its mysterious message ability allows you to knock out Ms. Magius to draw cards until you have 7 cards in hand. Its attack Hypnoblast deals 70 damage for 1 Psychic and 2 Colorless Energy and puts your opponent's active Pokemon to sleep. 
When Miss Magius first got released on Broken Bonds, many players already had very high expectations for it in combination with Buzzwall and Pheromosa GX. Its Jet Punch attack deals 30 damage to defending Pokemon and an extra 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon for one Grass Energy. Elegant Soul requires two Grass Energy and one Colorless to deal 190 damage, but during your next turn, this attack's base damage becomes 60. The most interesting attack, and the reason why players got so excited for it, is its GX attack, Beast Game GX, where for one Grass Energy deals 50 damage, and if it knocks a Pokemon out, you take an additional prize card. If this Pokemon has seven additional energies attached to it, this effect takes three extra prize cards instead. Upon first glance, this attack seems incredibly costly, even if it is for a big payoff like taking three additional prizes. However, the item card Beast Ring allows you to attach two basic energies from your deck if your opponent has three or four prize cards remaining. This is where Ms. Magius comes in. Thanks to Mysterious Message, you could easily get your opponent to the required number of prize cards while also netting the benefit of drawing cards with its ability. This combination could even be used on the first turn because, just like Honchkrow GX, Miss Magius had access to the item card Dust Stone to evolve in the first turn. This enabled Buzzwole and Pheromosa GX stacks to take four prize cards in the first turn of the game, which might not be a turn one win, but it at least gets you very close to winning the game already. This wasn't the last turn on deck that made use of Miss Magius. Similar to Honchkrow GX, when reset stamps are released in Unified Minds, the potential for decks that were able to put your opponent to zero cards in hand on the first turn increased. Unlike Honchkrow, this version of the deck didn't even require to use an attack to get your opponent's hand to zero. At the core were Ms. Magius and Reset Stamp. Ms. Magius would force your opponent to take prizes whenever you use Mysterious Message to collect the combo pieces in your hand. Reset Stamp would then allow you to put your opponent's hand to an amount equal to the remaining prize cards, ideally three or less. You would then use the Jesse and James Supporter card from Hidden Fates, which has both players discard two cards from their hand. If you discarded Weezing from Hidden Fates with its Surrender Now ability, which forces your opponent to discard an additional card if you discard it with Jesse and James. Alternatively, you could use multiple copies of Jesse and James or Mars. A supporter lets you draw two cards and discard one of your opponents. Using multiple supporters on the first turn was made possible through Lieutenant Surge's strategy. A supporter card that allows you to play a total of three supporter cards during your turn, including Lieutenant Surge's strategy. The final piece of the combo was Chip Chip Ice Axe, which lets you look at the top three cards of your opponent's deck and put one on top of the deck and shuffle the rest back into it. While this combo might seem hard to pull off due to its many turning wheels, the fact that you could draw a lot of cards with Magius's Mysterious Message made it relatively easy. Well, in theory at least. In reality, this strategy never came to fruition because TPCI realized the disruptive nature of this combination and how unhealthy it could be, which is why they banned Miss Magius in the standard format even before Reset Stamp and Jesse and James were ever released. The fact that the TPCI decided to step in and stop this combo from happening, in addition to Miss Magius already being a solid card in the meta before, make it one of the strongest turn 1 combo enablers in the history of the Pokemon TCG. And at number 5, we have Shaman EX from Black and White, Roaring Skies. Its setup ability lets you draw until you have 6 cards in your hand when Shaman EX is put onto your bench. Sky Return deals 30 damage for 2 colorless and returns Shaman EX and all cards attached to it back to your hand. When this card was first released, most players immediately understood how powerful it was to draw up to 6 cards multiple times per turn, as its ability wasn't limited to just one use. The reason why Shaman EX is on this list isn't any specific deck, but more so what it's done over the years, especially in the expanded format. Every time a new deck popped up in the last few years that ended up trying to establish some kind of broken turn 1 combo on the first or second turn, Shaman EX was the centerpiece of that deck. In 2022, TPCI eventually realized that Shaman EX was a problematic card and decided to put on the ban list to prevent future unwanted strategies that could pop off with its amazing draw power. Two of the upcoming cards on this list were also mostly enabled by Shaman EX, making it one of the most influential cards for turn 1 win strategies. And at number 4, we have Latios EX from X and Y Roaring Skies. Its fast raid attack deals 40 damage to one psychic energy, but has a unique effect that it can be used on the first turn, even when going first. Light Pulse requires one water, two psychic, and one colorless energy to deal 110 damage and prevent all effects of attacks, excluding damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. When Latios EX first came out, not a lot of people paid too much attention to it because most stacks wouldn't really be able to capitalize on fast raid as a strategy, and Light Pulse's heavy energy cost for below average amount of damage and a situational effect that most decks didn't really care about made it mostly useless. A year after its release in 2016, Latios EX saw its first use in competitive play. The increasing number of decks that were running low HP basics as attackers or to evolve them later made Latios EX a viable tech for these matchups. The most popular deck that fell victim to this strategy was Grand Ninja Break from X and Y Breakpoint. Grand Ninja Break itself only had an ability Giant Water Shuriken that dealt 60 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon at the cost of discarding a water energy from your hand. Breakpoint didn't work like regular evolutions. They instead gave access to more HP and new attacks and abilities to the regular version. The regular version of Greninja had two attacks, 
For one colorless energy, Shadow Stitching deals 40 damage and prevents your opponent from using any abilities during the next turn. For one water energy, Moonlight Slash does 6 damage plus an extra 20 if you return an energy card attached to Grand Ninja to your hand. The centerpiece of the deck was Frogadier. Water Duplicates searches your deck for up to 3 Frogadier and puts them on your bench, making it much easier to get your stage to Greninja's in play. Lastly, Froki had the Bubble Attack, which, for one water energy, would paralyze the defending Pokemon on a coin flip. To understand why Latios EX was so good against Grand Ninja decks, we need to take a look at how they were built. Usually, these decks would only run about 5 to 6 basic Pokemon that all had below 70 HP. This meant that most of the time, these decks wouldn't get more than one basic Pokemon, and if they didn't get to go first, Latios could easily take out their own Pokemon in combination with the tool card, Muscle Band, which adds an extra 20 damage to a Pokemon's attacks, except being able to knock out Pokemon like Froki. While this might seem like a gimmick, back then it was one of the best strategies for decks that otherwise had a horrendous matchup against Grand Ninja. Latios EX's true reign of terror, however, started a couple of years later, and not even at tournaments. Players using the Pokemon TCG Online client discovered that with the ever-expanding card pool of the expanded format, it became possible to win games on the Versus ladder by going first and winning on that first turn. The core strategy behind the deck was using Latios EX to attack, Shaman EX to draw and use a wide variety of damage modifiers and abilities, like Galarian Zigzagoon's Headbutt Tantrum, an ability that places one damage counter on an opponent's Pokemon when it's placed on your bench, to basically knock out any Pokemon that your opponent could have in the active spot. Many players used this strategy to quickly accumulate points on the Versus ladder to get its rewards. This strategy eventually became so popular that an entire sub-meta developed on the expanded ladder, where people actively tried to beat Latios EX decks instead of trying to play the regular format. Due to the miserable experience of losing half your games on the first turn, Shaman EX eventually got banned, limiting the power level of these decks. Players still occasionally try to bring it back using once per turn draw abilities, like Dendene GX's Dead Dead Change, which discards your hand and draws 6 cards, and Crobat V's Dark Assets, which draws you until you have 6 in hand. The power level, however, doesn't come close to what it used to be, and the fact that many basics now have 200 more HP would make it even harder for peak Latios Dunk to keep up. The amount of time it was relevant for, in addition for the incredible level of turn 1 power that Latios EX had, rightfully put it on our list. And at number 3, we have Foratress from Diamond and Pearl Legends Awaken. This card's Iron Shell Pokebody allows you to flip a coin each time you attach a basic energy card to it. If that coin flips a Tails, each Pokemon in play gets two damage counters put on it. Its explosion attack deals 100 damage for two metal energy and two colorless, and also deals 40 damage to itself. It took a total of three years after its release in 2008 to become relevant, but once it did, it became one of the strongest decks at the time. You might remember that paragraph about broken time space earlier in this video where we mentioned that in 2011, an emergency rotation was put into place because of changing rules with Black and White's expansion. As a reminder, prior to Black and White, the player going first was able to attach an energy and attack on their first turn. With Black and White, the same player could now play any card they wanted, in addition to being able to attack. These rules stuck for some time, but Pokemon had to step in to cut down the card pool because some decks became more than problematic with these changes. One of them was Fortress Donk. The main strategy was very straightforward. Attach as many energies to Fortress as you can to blow up your opponent's field. To do so, this card has a lot of help from different cards. The most important part was Energy Acceleration, as only attaching one energy per turn would never be enough to win. Embor from Black and White with its Inferno Fandango ability provided energy acceleration by being able to attach as many fire energies from your hand to your Pokemon as you liked. Its Heat Crash attack requires two fire and two colorless energy to deal 80 damage, and could often be used to finish games where your opponent had a Pokemon in play with slightly more HP than the others and therefore might not be knocked out by the Iron Shell. Next up, the deck required a lot of draw power to be able to find all its combo pieces and most importantly, a lot of energies. Besides, Ooxie from Diamond and Pearl Legends Awaken, with its setup Poke Power that allowed you to draw cards until you have 7 in hand when it's placed onto your bench, the deck also ran Unknown R with its Retire Poke Power, which allows you to discard it from your hand to draw a card, and most importantly, Shuckle from Heart Gold and Soul Silver Black Star Promos. Its Fermenting Liquid Poke Body draws a card whenever you attach an energy to Shuckle. Now, you might think to yourself, why should I attach energies to Shuckle when I need them on Fortress to deal damage? This is where Unknown from Heart Gold and Soul Silver comes into the spotlight. When a note is put onto your bench, you can use its Return Poke Power to return all energies attached to one of your Pokemon back to your hand. This combination of Unknown and Shuckle is used to draw through your entire deck to build up a combo and finally use Fortress to win the game. While this strategy wasn't the most consistent to get off, once the deck got rolling thanks to Shuckle and Embor, it was almost unstoppable. This strategy could, of course, also be pulled off on the first turn thanks to Broken Time Space, a card that we've already highlighted earlier. In the unlimited format, this deck became way better and can basically always win on the first turn thanks to the many consistency item cards that the deck can get access to, making Fortress one of the most unique and strongest turn 1 win conditions in the history of the Pokemon TCG. Next up in second place is Shiftry from Black and White Next Destinies. 
Its giant fan ability allows you to flip a coin when you evolve one of your Pokemon into Shifri. If that coin flips heads, you get to shuffle one of your opponent's Pokemon back into their deck. Its attack Whirlwind deals 60 damage for two Darkness energies and one Colorless, but you'll quickly realize this attack isn't needed at all. For the longest time, Shiftry wasn't more than a bulk card used to fill up the set list of next destinies, so in order to see how it became one of the most notorious and most oppressive turn 1 strategies of all time, we need to take a look at the cards that enabled Shiftry. It all started with X and Y Ancient Origins in 2015, roughly 3.5 years after Shiftry's release. The newly released stadium card, Forest of Giant Plants, allowed both players to evolve any of their grass Pokémon immediately, just like Broken Time Space. While Shiftry itself is a Dark-type Pokémon, all versions of its basic Pokémon, Dot, are Grass-type Pokémon. And while its Stage 1 Nuzleaf often switches between being Dark or Grass-type, Nuzleaf from Flash Fire provided the deck with a Grass-type version of it. This meant that Shiftry could now be evolved immediately for as long as Forest of Giant Plants was in play. With this strategy in mind, the deck would now be able to use four giant fan abilities, as long as you flip enough heads and your opponent didn't have more than four Pokemon in play, you could easily win the game, right? Well, if this is where the deck would have had its power capped, we probably wouldn't be talking about it on our list, or at least not in a spot this high up on it. Next to its four regular uses, Shiftry had access to multiple cards that allowed to use its ability even more frequently. The strongest card in that regard was De-Evolution Spray an item card that allowed you to return the highest evolution stage of one of your Pokemon back to your hand. Thanks to a forest of giant plants, you could immediately evolve it again to get another chance at shuffling one of your opponent's Pokemon into their deck. Another card to potentially reuse Giant Fan was Super Scoop Up, a card that has you flip a coin and if heads, lets you return one of your Pokemon in play and all cards attached to it back to your hand. This deck also opted to use Scoop Up Cyclone as its ace spec, which immediately allows you to return one of your Pokemon and all cards attached to it to your hand. Ace specs are powerful item cards that can only be used once in a deck. You also can't run different copies of Ace spec cards. In terms of draw power, the deck had access to many different item cards that burnt quickly through the deck. And of course, as many other fast-paced decks at the time, Shaman EX with its setup ability to fill up your hand with 6 cards when it's put into play. The deck could even gain more access to cards like the Evolution Spray, Scoop Up Cyclone, or some of the Consistency card thanks to Recycle. An item card that lets you flip a coin and put a card from your discard pile back on top of your deck, if you flip heads. In an ideal world, this gave Shiftry up to 17 chances to get rid of your entire board to win the game. This deck was very inconsistent, however. The wrong sequence of cards in your hand could mean that you didn't get to your combo pieces, and at the end of the day, your entire strategy was based on coin flips. The other issues the deck had to face was that people were now starting to play cards in the decks that could auto-win the Shiftry matchup for them. The most popular one was Wobbuffet from X and Y Phantom Forces. Its by barricade ability removes any abilities from Pokemon in play, either player's hands, and either player's discard pile, for as long as Wobbuffet is in the active spot. Some players tried to play around it by including Escape Rope in their Shiftry decks, an item card that made both players switch their active Pokemon with one from their bench Pokemon. The goal was to get Wobbuffet out of the active spot to then start using abilities again. This, however, didn't work if your opponent had multiple copies of Wobbuffet in play, or if it was their only Pokemon in play. Wobbuffet already being a prevalent card in the metagame made Shiftry a very risky deck choice even when looking over its inconsistent nature as a coin flip deck. TPCI still realized how unhealthy a combination like this was going to be for the game, especially as it made deck building incredibly restrictive because you either had to play an out to this turn 1 win deck, or accept your fate when you faced it. This is why Shiftry was banned not even a month after Forest of Giant Plants was released, making it the second ever card to be banned in the expanded format at the time. Eventually, Forest of Giant Plants was banned in the expanded format because too many good grass Pokemon were getting printed and leaving it unbanned could cause unwanted interactions at any moment due to the giant and ever-expanding card pool of the expanded format. Right when Forest of Giant Plants got banned, Shiftry's ban was lifted, and it remains unbanned to this day, having moved back into irrelevance. Its brief stay as one of the most broken turn 1 win decks put it onto our list, and players that were around at the time will probably never forget how an irrelevant bulk rare from Next Destinies became a $20 card overnight. And lastly, at number 1 on our list, we have Sableye from Diamond and Pearl Stormfront. Its over-eager Pokebody makes you start the game if Sableye is in your active spot when the game starts, regardless of the outcome of the opening coin flip. Impersonate has no energy requirement and discards a supporter card from your deck to use it as the effect of the attack. Sableye's overconfident attack deals 10 damage for 1 darkness energy, but if the defending Pokemon has less HP than Sableye, it deals 40 instead. The combination of overeager and overconfident is where the problem with Sableye already start. Being able to always go first while having an attack that can deal a lot of damage on the first turn could already cause a lot of games to end early as Sableye was involved. As previously mentioned, players during the Diamond and Pearl era of the game were able to attach energies on the first turn, use Poke Powers and Poke Bodies, and attack. One core piece in Sableye's ability to close out games quickly was Special Darkness Energy. Special Darkness Energy adds an extra 10 damage to the attacks of the Dark-type Pokémon it's attached to. 
This meant that any Pokemon with less than 60 HP would receive 50 damage instead of 20. As you might have already figured out, any amount of HP lower than 60 is not going to survive 50 damage. Meaning that just by having access to special darkness energy, Sableye could take out many basic Pokemon at the time as 50 HP wasn't an uncommon number for Pokemon that still had to evolve. If this wasn't enough, Sableye could even use Crobat G's Flash Bite Poke Power to put a damage counter to Pokemon he was trying to knock out, making it possible for Sableye to even knock out Pokemon with 60 or 70 HP if you had access to enough Crobat G's on your first turn. While this already ended some games before one player got to play the game at all, it wasn't consistent enough to actually be considered an issue at the time. Just like Fortress before, Sableye became an actual issue when the black and white rule changes were introduced that now allowed the player going first to do absolutely everything without limitations on cards or attacking. With all these benefits available to player going first, a card that always made sure you went first was expectedly powerful. Or more blatantly put, broken. If we quickly think back to what Shubbit Donk tried to do on the first turn of the game by placing damage counters with Poke Blower Plus, Crobat G's Flash Bite, and by reusing the Poke Turn and Super Scoop Up, Sableye could now do all of these things in the first turn of the game before your opponent even got to draw a card for their first turn. Unlike many other decks on this list, Sable Dunk was incredibly consistent, and ended up being the main reason for the aforementioned mid-season rotation in 2011. Even in today's Unlimited decks, Sableye is run at the full four copies, because being able to start the game is such an incredible benefit and can often win you the game immediately. This combination of enabling turn one win strategies to this day, thanks to the over-eager Pokebody and overconfident as a Donk attack by itself back in the day, makes Sableye the best ever card for turn one win strategies and will probably never be surpassed unless the game designers decide to actually break the game. Alright, and that's the list. What's your favorite turn 1 win strategy? Would you like to see these happen more often in the Pokemon CCG, or are you happy with them mostly just being a thing of the past? Make sure to let us know down in the comments below, and tell us what kinds of videos you want to see next.